I'm, I'm not sure how David De Gea gets himself out of this, in all honesty. I think what, you, what you're seeing is a product of a number of issues. I think he, not happy with the club, felt that he probably deserved a, a better deal and fell out of love with Manchester United as a result. And then all of a sudden you have this, this dip in form and you don't have anything to fall back on. Um, in terms of passion or, you know, even as good as you've been for, for the club for, for so long, now, because you, you're disconnected from the club, you, you, you don't have the kind of emotional response. The only thing you can do for, from here on in is speak with, with the Manchester United goalkeeping coach and somehow try to, try to work this out be, between the two of them. Um, but in all honesty, he needs a break. It's probably going to come in the form of, of, of this summer, whether he's with Manchester United uh, come, come August, we'll see. And, and the good thing out of this is, is that United have two winnable games, whether David De Gea is on form or not. Gab, obviously, leading up to all of this was taught that David De Gea wanted a contract that matched or bettered that of Alexis Sanchez, saying that, look, I've been player of the year for the last four years at the club and using him as the standard... How much then does what's happened over the last few weeks affect that? You know what? It's easy to, to, to talk about how these things are, are connected and, and to think, oh, David, David De Gea is worried about his contract, so he's unsettled, so he makes mistakes. I'm not so sure it works that way because, you know, the reality is David De Gea may or may not get Alexis Sanchez uh, type money, but he's got another year left on his deal if, if he ends up not extending, um, you know, he can move to another club that, that'll that give him close to Alexis Sanchez to, type money, uh, or he can walk as a free agent and probably get even more money in a year's time. So I don't think these two things are related. I think the reality is, you know, this is a goalkeeper who for the past 18 months with Spain and with Manchester United has made errors. And the fact that for so long, you know, the knee-jerk reaction was like, oh, David De Gea, the world's undisputed number one, I think has masked has kind of, you know, papered over that. Uh, fact of the matter is, he's a very, very good goalkeeper, one of the best in the world, who's having an absolute rotten time. And, and I actually think that's pretty unrelated to his contract. Uh, FC reporting today, Gab Sauce is suggesting that Manchester United could be looking at Oblak in the summer to come in to replace David De Gea. Is this Oblak's people just trying to capitalise on what's going on at the moment? No, look, I think Manchester United have to have uh, a plan B. I think it's pretty evident that they don't feel that, that Romero can be your, your week-in, week-out uh, goalkeeper. And obviously, you know, if you make a list of, of who are considered the world's best goalkeepers, All Black is the one guy who, who isn't at a very, very top team where you'd have to throw through, pay through the nose or, or they wouldn't want to come. You know, you can throw money at All Black, you can throw money at Atleti, and you know, there's a good chance you'll get the deal done. Um, so there's no question that they're looking at it. But I think equally, I don't see how you can sign Oblak without finding a home for, for De Gea. Um, and those two things go, go hand in hand. And, and that's the thing, isn't it, Gab? Because obviously, David De Gea, you kind of look at where he could go. Real Madrid, obviously, a few years ago, he was going to go there. But for the fax machine, they've got Courtois, they've got Navas as well. Barcelona are fine. PSG, you would suggest, would be the only real destination of a massive club that could pay the sort of wages that the De Gea would be expecting. Yeah, the problem with PSG is this. We keep talking about PSG as, as the massive club that can pay high wages. The problem is uh, we've seen PSG this season already hit by financial fair play uh, concerns. Sorry, Craig. But that is the reason why... You know, they basically have so few senior pros on their books and why there were all those guys that nobody had ever heard of playing in the French Cup final. On top of that, they have Buffon uh, locked in for another year. Wow. And, and obviously, you're not going to, it's not like you can go and sell Buffon. It's a lot of money committed there. They also have a long term deal committed to Alfonso Areola. And frankly, I don't think goalkeeper is necessarily a priority for, for, for PSG uh, because they're big on Areola, as I said. So, and they've got plenty of issues elsewhere. So you get beyond that, and yes, people have suggested fanciful, well, what if they swap the hair for, for Courtois? Uh, these things keep going. I, I wonder if maybe if you're Courtois, may, or sorry, if you're De Gea, rather, you don't think, you know what? How about I stay put and, and kind of take a chance on my contract? Worst comes to worst, I walk on a free in a year's time, I'm still a, a young man, and I go and, and sign somewhere big as a free agent. 